Welcome everybody, in this video I go through a napkin calculation and it's about battery swapping profitability comparing NEO in this case with Xpeng. Why Xpeng? Because currently everybody's hyping Xpeng because of the success of its low cost model, the Mona M03, which has been a success like the thousands of cars that are putting out currently is very very impressive. Uh, as a disclaimer, I have to say here on this channel, I am invested in NEO, I'm not invested in Xpeng. Naturally, I am not so much incentivized to be on the positive side around Xpeng than I am on NEO. Or in other words, I believe more in the future of NEO than in Xpeng. And I would use my, uh, this napkin calculation to make this point. However, that doesn't mean that you need to agree with me. You need to do your own due diligence, but maybe these numbers, which frankly are uh, very generic, um, there's more to it, um, can give you something to think about. Okay, so that's what we want to do here. First, the x napkin calculation here about the Mona, which is a very low cost car. Um, I saw it in China with my own eyes. Um, I think it's well, from the design, well, not my type of car anyways, but uh, in the interior, I think it's made very, very well. I'm quite impressed for x ability since the G6, actually. And uh, I think the downside of the car is maybe that it's very um, tiny, like uh, inside the car, you don't have much space and so on. That's very much opposed to the Neo Envo uh, cars. But anyways, it seems to consumers like them, at least also in Southeast Asia, I think, where uh, x is selling tremendously currently. So... What matters here on the numbers is that the uh, average sales price, the ASP, is currently around 18,000 uh, USD. Um, if we assume a margin, a vehicle margin, okay, of 3%, that means of each of the cars sold for 18,000 uh, USD with that price tag, they make roughly 540 USD in profits, which they can use to pay everything else like marketing, sales, R&D, all of the overhead that the company is having, okay? So in total, if they are, you know, the current sales are, are round about 16,000 cars a month, very impressive. If they would continue that as an average uh, throughout the year, uh, that would land them at roughly um, 100 million USD in pure profits that the Mona M3 will get uh, Xpeng on the on the balance sheet there in order to, as I said, pay back all of the other expenses and then we'll see net whether or not there will be still something um, to, you know, to uh, leave actual a profit for the company after everything. So I think that's why investors are really um, impressed by uh, Xpeng right now. First of all, the, the, the revenues are growing quickly um, and then uh, Expo with that has a chance to break in even, become profitable. So that's the good news. Now I'm comparing that um, internally here with the Volkswagen uh, project. So um, you heard me stating in previous videos that I think at some point um, Expo may actually become an R&D house. So Expo got this big investment, 5% or about um, of stakeholdership by Volkswagen and they are helping them producing a couple of models on an old Xpeng platform actually to be come out and um, so Xpeng is earning a fee of that and I think that's what put also a lot of safety and security for investors in there because um, we had one uh, quarterly earnings where they explicitly mentioned that fee and that might be continuing. Um, so they booked in that quarter, I don't remember exactly which quarter it was, around 140 million. And that is almost, well, it's almost um, pure profits. Uh, it's not exactly because obviously you need engineers and, and stuff that is working on these projects and you need to pay them. So let's cut that maybe in half after all of the salaries and stuff. But certainly there's lots of R&D and uh, IP and so on that uh, Xpeng has done previously, which they can monetize this way, right? So as you can see already, the Volkswagen fee is higher than what ne uh, Xpeng here would be earning from, from the Mona in an entire year in terms of profits, um, well, at least if we say that the margins are very, very high in this project. And so if that leaves us with a kind of a break-even analysis or a comparison of those two projects, 
um, they would should uh, they should be selling 260,000 cars a year of those monas in order to achieve the same trickling in revenues uh, that are um, you know, being used to pay everything else on on the uh, on the overhead side. So that's telling you already within Xpeng that a pro that a project like Mona actually really really needs those high big volumes and numbers in order to be even competitive within the company as a project, right? Because you could say, well. Xpeng could just become an R&D house a company for other car manufacturers, earn these fees. That's much less trouble than bringing out all of those uh, new cars, which also, you know, the R&D is not in there. And um, you make those tiny profits with those tiny margins because this is a very low, low cost car. So first of all, you don't get much revenues per car sold uh, as opposed to, for example, a Neo car, which is um, closer to maybe 30 to 40,000 uh, US dollars. So easily double than that uh, and the margins for NEO are also much higher right they are currently at 13 uh, percent I've done this other video comparing Tesla margins and uh, NEO margins that was my last video watch it if you haven't yet uh, but for those low-cost um, products it usually you get very very tiny tiny margins uh, because it's such a competitive field because it's uh, you know your costs are so high in as opposed to the, the revenue that you can charge the price that you can charge so that's the nature of that unless uh, Xpeng finds a way to really have high margins in that field that would be very very impressive and future earnings report frankly um, you know could surprise us in this way if they have very high margins. Uh, but uh, in the past, Xpeng really had even negative margins and um, is now only getting back into the positive margins territory, uh, territory but maybe driven by the, the Xpeng brand, which has uh, even some higher priced models, right? So uh, don't expect too much in profitability from the Mo uh, Mona project, uh, in my opinion. Uh, People like, like the weeklies with that sort of project, but as you can see, it's it's a tough choice to venture into that business as it's almost not more profitable than just becoming an R&D house. But that's just for the comparison within Xpeng. And now let's compare it for fun um, against battery swapping because usually lots of the uh, pushback against NEOs because of battery swapping. And that's the, the main uh, problem for NEO's profits, uh, profitability, and uh, it's all of this R&D and uh, CapEx investment and so on, right? But maybe have, have a look of what the future could bring here. So we're currently roughly at 3,000 stations, actually more than that. But um, we know that roughly around 60% or less, um, the, the stations are breaking even, okay? So we, we know that. Uh, so that's equal to around 200 swaps per day per station. Um, if a station can do roughly 350 swaps a day, um, you know, we've got the different generations of stations. I've just done, as I said, very generic numbers in order to simplify things. Uh, the, the truth might be somewhere off a little bit, plus minus 5 to 10% here, but that doesn't matter too much. So let's assume at 200 swaps per day per station, the station becomes profitable, right? And if we just manage to get 20 more swaps per day per station. So 220 swaps. So that's roughly 63% utilization of a station. In that case, uh, we'll, we'll be charging 15 USD or making 15 USD in profit per swap uh, of those 20 additional uh, swaps per day that are entirely profitable. So that could, could translate into people getting charged for the swap. Uh, maybe a partner, a um, new swapping partner getting charged for a swap or the electricity fee or the whole fee in general. Okay, just 15 USD per swap. I think that's not too high given some of the swaps are priced around 30 USD and so on. But anyways, I'm assuming 15 USD here. Then those 20 additional swaps per day per station at 15 USD would generate more than 300 million in profits um, that are high margins that can be used to really pay back um, all of the R&D, all of the marketing in EO, all of the CapEx, all of the overhead and so on. And as you can see, this number is bigger than a Volkswagen fee. Uh, it's bigger than what Mona would be earning um, at these assumptions per year. It's actually triple that. So that's quite surprising to see that only at a 3% 
above um, the break-even point of the swap stations, that's the type of revenues and profits that uh, the battery swapping network could actually um, get here at these assumptions. So looking at that, uh, it's painting a, a pretty interesting picture here on the comparison between Xpeng and NEO. And of course, that's not only about NEO cars, because then this whole thing is a network effect. It's an ecosystem. Uh, if more people are willing uh, to pay for swapping, then also uh, NEO gets more profitable. Hence, they can make their cars cheaper. Hence, more people are swapping. Hence, more partners go on board. Hence, those partners are getting charged. Hence, the profits for battery swapping are going up and so on and so on. And all of that without having to invest more in personnel, in R&D, or working in some um, yeah, projects that may not always be smooth with a company like Volkswagen and stuff. So to me, that looks quite interesting and quite, um, yeah, quite exciting from an investor's perspective. That's why I think at some point, if the break even for battery swap stations is demonstrated and achieved and translated into the balance sheet, investors will get very excited about the build-out of battery swap stations. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching.